So the other day I put together my top 15 favorite knives of 2023. And in that video, I said I was leaving out knives, certain knives that made me smile. And these are knives that really excite me and could totally go on that list. But I decided to just make them their own video. So here is my top 10 favorite knives of 2023 that put a smile on my face and make me excited. Let's get into it. Now, starting it off, I want to say that I had to leave out knives that did not come in 2023. So there's a lot of knives that could have went on this list that I couldn't put because they didn't drop in 2023. Knives like the Quichetti, which is basically a modern mini katana. Now I do have a full review on this if you wanna go check it out with me and Kara just cutting exactly. all kinds of stuff. Exactly. They are available. Um, but go and watch that video. I think it's called the Modern Katana or something. It's absolute badass, Serena. Definitely puts a smile on my face, but it was made last year. Another one that did not come out this year is the Factor, the Winter Blades Factor. The Winter Blades Factor, while this one did come out in 2023 because it's the third version, the knife itself was released last year. So because of that reason, I couldn't put it on the list, but it is a very practical, uh, badass knife that absolutely makes me smile and I love it. But it came out last year. So, what are some knives on the list? Well, starting it off, we have the Riat EXO-K. I had to put this on the list. Now, the reason why this one has to go on the list is because of the excitement. Now, this is a knife that's actually kind of dangerous. Now, I personally don't think it's that dangerous. I think it's very easy to use, but it's definitely a knife I wouldn't just hand to anybody. I wouldn't just hand somebody this knife and expect them to not get hurt, because they will. You have to understand it and know how to use it, which adds to the excitement. You know, knives already have a little bit of a danger factor to them, you know, just being a knife. So when you start adding a little bit more danger into it, maybe it's just me, but that stuff makes me excited. I love that stuff. I love a little danger. So, you know, something like this, when I see something so innovative, unique, and different, you know, regardless of how practical it is, I think it's awesome and I definitely love it. It definitely excites me and puts a smile on my face. The Rhea EXOK. Now they just dropped a few of them and they will be coming back very soon. So keep an eye out on that. Now, since we're on the Riats, let me pull out one more, the Ria EXOM. So the Ria EXOM is a, a gravity knife. Now, the reason why I love this so much, well, the original one came out before 2023, but this one came out in 2023 improved. Well, the size is a little bit smaller, they did put a lock on it. So now it's, the only way this is gonna fail is if the blade snaps because the, there's no pressure on the lock. If you stab this into something, nothing is, there's no pressure to the lock. So it's not gonna fail. It will never ever fail. It, the blade will snap before it fails, um, just the way it's built. So the clip, it has a clip on it too. The original one did not have a clip. You had to use a sheath. But what I love about it is the cool factor for sure, right? We love the cool factor. It's definitely unique. It's definitely different, but gravity knives have been around since like World War I or World War II or something like that. Long, long time. But I've never ever seen one done at a high level. So while this knife, this design has been out for a very long time, they've always been cheap and just not really good quality. So to see React do one, it just, that, that excites me right there. So, because I know it's gonna be done at a high level. I've yet to have seen another gravity knife that even stands close to the Riet EXO as far as build quality, uh, you know, and materials and everything. So, you know, it's definitely something that a lot of people want in their collection, especially if you're a collector of awesome, you know, in which I definitely like to be. So it has 3V steel, at least this version has 3V steel, titanium, and then there's different handle materials, different inlays, and these will be back very, very soon as well. Hit the bell and I will notify you as soon as they drop. The, the company's supposed to call, or some of the dealers are gonna contact me right before they drop, so I'll have a little bit of a heads up, so pay attention. All right, so the next one is 
This one technically came out seven months ago, so it's right on the line, but I'm gonna put it in anyways. I call it the Transformer, but it is done by Forever Steel. Now, it's not very practical. It is, it's not very safe either because you can easily fail it. The spine whack in this thing, it will fail and you'll probably get hurt. So I don't think it's the most practical for self-defense. Now, maybe the other ones don't fail, maybe it's just mine, but I would imagine that they probably all do to some extent. But what's cool about it is it do, it is built out of very premium materials, S9EV and all titanium. And all these parts are moving parts to make it transform from a regular pocket knife to a push dagger. So to put that all into a knife, man, that, that's just, it's super innovative, super different, and it is very cool. So while I don't think this is the most practical knife, I think the cool factor is like 10 out of 10. Like it's really, really good, or maybe, maybe nine out of 10. Um, eight out of 10 because it fails. Let's, let's give it that, at least give it an eight. But all in all, you know, it's very, very expensive. So that is one piece to the puzzle that, that's a little ridiculous. The, the price is just absolutely insane. And the only place I can see you can get it right now, I think, is on AliExpress if you did want to get one. Um, but the, the price is just ridiculous. But as far as the knife goes, it is pretty damn awesome. And it definitely is something that puts a smile on my face. Next is actually a custom. So this custom is done by Scott still. So Scott Stills makes these badass handmade customs. So it's going to be expensive, but I can't help but put a smile on my face when I see it. Just going to his Instagram and looking at some of his knife designs, they are so wicked and, and different. They're not your ordinary knife. And that's what I love about it. Now, this one is done in magnet cut steel, titanium liners, a titanium mill pocket clip, backspacer, and it is, I think it's red paper micarta. The action is really, really good. The sounds in the, the acoustics are awesome. I love the sounds of this thing. I think the acoustics are, are really, really nice. It has a really, really cool sound to it. But the build quality is definitely there. He does a really, really good job. He's making knives at a high level for handmade knives. But this is the part that really cracks me up. The blade looks, in my opinion, it looks like a rhino's penis, okay? So it looks like the cock of a rhino. Now, <laughs> his Instagram picture is a rhinoceros humping another ry rhino. So that just right there just makes me crack up. It puts a smile on my face. I love a little humor, and I love that, and maybe this, this wasn't intentional, I don't know, but it fits. So I absolutely love Edgy Blade Works knives. So Scott Stills from Edgy Blade Work is doing an amazing job. And, you know, not only is it cool looking and it's definitely not something like, you know, that everybody else has, but it actually is very practical. This thing is super useful, way more useful than you would think. So yeah, Edgy Blade Works, they're kicking ass. Definitely check out his Instagram. Next. The PMP Berserker. Now, stay tuned because I have another knife that you can get if this is out of your price range that's very similar. So this is the PMP Berserker and it's an M390 titanium frame lock and it is built at a high level. Now, maybe the steel is a little bit on the softer side, but as far as build quality, fit, finish, action, all that stuff, it is very, very well done. Um, the clip works great. The, the machining has a lot of machining on the inside to bring down the weight. So while it's a big knife and it's probably, you know, he too heavy for most people, or maybe not, because it is still practical. It's not a knife that's impractical. This is a knife that you could definitely use. And, you know, guys like um, Satu Dave love knives like this. Like, and I'm not saying that's the, the majority, but there is a minority of people like Satu Dave, um, um, Choir Boy, um, Scab from Choir Boy, or Joe from JS Blade Works that like to carry these monster knives, these knives that some people would say that's the most impractical thing I've ever seen, but they love it. And this is a knife I think could be absolutely practical for the guys who like the ridiculous and big. It's a monster, it's big, but it's not absurdly big. The tip drops down, so it's gonna be easy to get to. It is a Tonto, a functioning Tonto, and it's extremely ergonomic. Now, if you love this, but it's maybe out of your price range or maybe you can't get it, 
Check out this new Kubi. Now, this is not the same designer. This is done by Mikkel Williamson, but it has a hollow grind and a flat grind, so it's a dual grind. The PMP does not, but you can just see it. They have a lot of similarities. So, if you know, you want to try something that's maybe a little bit more affordable. It's very ergonomic. It has a reversible deep carry clip. Stupid, stupid smooth. Really good action. And on this one, you can use the fuller. On the PMP, you can't. The fuller, it, it, you just can't get to it while it's a closed. So it's definitely one to check out. This is a brand new model from Kubi. So this is the first time it's being shown on the channel. It just came in, so I figured I'd just add it. The next one. The PMP Aries, another one that's very, very practical and <laughs> it makes me smile. So this one's actually the level of which I think most people can tolerate or most, not tolerate, which most people would be at as far as large knives go. Because, you know, it's a full-size knife. It's actually just a regular full-size knife, but it has this look to it that's very aggressive, you know, and, you know, even like the tail of it, like looking at that tail, the thing just looks aggressive. You know, it's an attitude adjuster. The scales are very primitive looking. The blade shape is an extremely useful blade shape and the action is as smooth as you can get a knife. Like, I don't think knives come any smoother. It is an absolute guillotine. There's no resistance. It almost feels like it's like it's loose, but it is rock solid. So yeah, the PMP Aries is definitely one that, another one that makes me excited. Now, one more PMP. We have the PMP Kodiak. This is new. I do have an affiliate link down in the description to Tools for Gents if you want to get one. Um, they have a lot of other stuff on, on that site. So definitely check out my affiliate link, Tools for Gents. They have a lot of badass stuff on there. Not just this. Like They're crazy. They got tons of crazy stuff. But this is a knife that's obviously, like the last one's done at a very high level. The fit, the finish, tolerances, action, everything is on point. I love how big the thumb studs are. You can launch them out, extremely ergonomic, but this is very impractical for most people. Most people are not gonna be carrying around a one pound brick of a knife, but maybe if you live in Alaska or something like this, or that, you would, you'd carry something like this because I could see it maybe being a little bit useful out there. You know, if you need a, a folding knife that's just an absolute tank that'll take anything, the PMP Kodiak might be up your alley. But for the most, for most people, this is like five times the weight of what they're wanting to carry. But that's also what makes it badass. The spear point blade is robust and thick. The scales, while being extremely ergonomic, you can really feel how tough they are. Vault-like lockup. Stupid smooth, so it has <laughs> really good action. The backspace is just ridiculous. There's so much hardware on this thing. I love it. I absolutely love it. M390 steel, and yep, yep, this definitely gets me excited. When I see things like this hit the market, I my, I, my smile just goes up. Like, I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Now, this next one I thought was going to be very impractical. I really did. But after getting it and using it, I realized, holy cow, this thing is super practical. And that is the CMB Kawanagari. The Kawanagari is a crisp blade shape on a premium knife with premium steel, premium everything. So if you're a knife collector already and you like the unique, you like the different, you like the interesting, this is definitely something you should have in your collection. It is pure badassery but it's also super functional. You wouldn't think so. And I know a lot of people you're gonna say, oh, try sharpening it. It's not hard to sharpen. All you need is a round stone. So let's get that out of the way. Uh, maybe I'll make a video if you guys really, really need it, but all you need is a round stone. It's super easy to sharpen. Um, now, you're not gonna have to sharpen it that often if you just use it like a light duty knife. Now, this is not a knife you're gonna wanna hard use. You're not gonna wanna be tough on it because you're not gonna wanna keep sharpening it. It's not a blade, it doesn't have blade geometry for repeated sharpening, but you can easily maintenance the edge and keep it going for a very, very long time. This tip acts like a little claw. You can just claw it into things and open things up. The double or triple recurve, whatever you want to call it, makes extended cuts really, really good. It, it, using this showed me how useful a Chris is because it absolutely is. Now, the, the thing, the reasons why I love it though is just because you don't see folding crisps very often. I know Cold Steel has one, but 
for the most part, it's not something you see every day, especially at a high level with premium materials, titanium, M390, uh, you know, titanium mill pocket clip. The action is so, so good on it with this super light blade. Very, very snappy. And the cool factor, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 on the cool factor uh, chart. <laughs> it is badass. And like I said, to me, when I seen this drop, this was an absolute must have in my collection. And I think a lot of you feel the same way. Now, another one that's actually pretty big, Serge Panchico Trisect. Now, this is one that I, well, first off, I want to say Serge Panchico. Before I ever even made a channel, right, when I first got into the community, I, Serge Panchico's designs have always spoke to me. While scrolling by on Instagram, I'd see a Serge Panchico and I always have to stop. Something about his designs just, just talk to me and regardless of how practical they are. Um, but most of them, to be honest, most of his knives are overly practical, like extremely practical. Now this is the Trisect. This is the biggest knife I've personally had of his or even seen of his. And I believe it's done by Best Tech. But man, they did a good job on it. This thing feels like a premium big knife. Very ergonomic, fantastic access to lock bar, stupid smooth, multiple forms of deployment. And it's just done very, very well. And not only the look of it, you know, really makes me smile because it's, it's not, it's not like overly unique, but it's definitely different. It's definitely not something you see every day. And you know, when you get a wicked design like this and then the, the build quality is so good, it really brings this thing up. And this thing is expensive. It is not affordable for sure, but for a collector piece in your collection to, to carry a high-end EDC knife that just screams cool factor, this is definitely a really cool one. The Serge Panchico Trisect check it out. I think there's still some left, by the way. You have to go on his site, I believe, to get them. Next, the Max Ace Hephaestus. Now, this is a knife. If you want a virtually indestructible premium knife, something that's built out of premium materials and <laughs> is on the far side of extreme Check out the Hephaestus. This, this, I don't even think they make them anymore. Or they, I don't even know if they have any more. I don't think so. Um, I'll try to link everything I can down in the description, by the way. So if there's anything you're wanting to know the price of or anything like that, just check out the description. But the Hephaestus, built like an absolute tank. Not only does it have a very robust frame lock, it has a little gizmo here next to the frame lock that you can turn to lock the frame from slipping. So it's impossible for it to slip out of lockup. Now, if you're really going to be extra, extra hard on it and you want it to be virtually indestructible, you lock that and then put in a hardened steel pin that goes through the titanium, through the hardened steel M390 blade, and then back through the other side of titanium, basically making this thing virtually indestructible. And, you know, aside from those things, like that would make any knife extremely, extremely tough. But when you add in the other factors of this, the thickness of the titanium, the robustness of the back spacer, the blade stock thickness, the stop pins, this thing is built like a vault and I love it. And, and stuff like that just, it excites me. And you know, just as a regular folding knife, I mean, this thing is super snappy. The action's great, extremely ergonomic. This is something that while it might be Basically impractical for most people. For some people, this thing could be very useful. Like, you know, out in the field or something like that, if you need something that's just like super tough and it'll last forever, this is it, man. This thing will, it, it's, a, it's a beast. But it's heavy as all hell. <laughs> it does come with extra hardware and the pin. So, you know, it, it, you know, you got the parts if anything ever goes wrong for the most part, which I don't really see anything going wrong. You'd have to really beat the tar out of this thing to, to make any, any, you know, to have any effect. But to me, it has cool factor written all over it. And personally, it makes me smile. 
While this might not be the most practical for most people, to some people, this thing could be right up their alley and exactly what they're looking for because it is badass and it actually functions and works really, really good. Very ergonomic, great blade shape, um, super thick geometry. It's gonna be super tough while still cutting really good. Um, like I said, all premium materials. So, you know, the not only is the materials premium, but it's built in a premium way. And, you know, this thing will basically last an apocalypse with no problem no problem at all and then the last one is another max ace the max ace titanus this thing is first off let's listen to the acoustics because the sound of it makes me smile just in itself When you take this thing and you open it up, it is absolutely obnoxious, 100% impractical. There is nothing practical about this thing, but that's what I love about it. I love that it's something that nobody is gonna be carrying this, and I'm not saying nobody's carrying it, I'm not saying that, I'm saying, but the likelihood of you walking around town and somebody's carrying this thing is like slim to none, right? But. The people that do have it are gonna love it because there's there's not a lot of them. You know, only certain people have them and it is an absolute monster, a monster of a knife. It's like bigger than most, it's bigger than a lot of fixed blades, but it's a folder that comes with a pin, again, like the Hephaestus, so you can basically make it indestructible. It doesn't have the lock bar lock, but the lock itself you know, you're gonna make it stronger just by holding on to it with your, you know, with your squeeze because it has basically a, uh, a, uh, a sub frame lock on there. So it has a frame lock that's screwed in to the inside. Now, the handle material is all titanium built with very um, big hardware. So that's really cool. And it comes with extra hardware. It comes with the tools to take it apart and all that good stuff. It comes with the pin, the extra pin to make it basically a fixed blade, but it's just ridiculous on another level of ridiculous. And that's what I love about it. When I seen this thing coming out, oh man, there's a few other ones that I don't even have in the collection that I still want to get. Because when I get something like this in my hand, I, I love it so much that it, it's almost, um, it's addicting. It's really addicting, the excitement you get from something like this. Now, maybe that's not everybody. Some people might look at this and say, I would never want that in the collection because I'd never carry it. That's cool, but a lot of us, would love to have this in the collection because it's so unique, it's so different, it's so overbuilt, bad assery, and obnoxious. And that's, that's the cool part about it. But anyways, work hard, stay tough. You know society's relying on you. Until next time, peace.